Well, that's right, guys. It is the greatest time of the year. It is steelhead season. So we're going to talk about the Oregon Steelhead Report, what's going on throughout all the different zones. My name is Josh. I'm your host with In and On The Net Fishing, and let's get right into it. So notably, there is three different zones in the state of Oregon that we're going to really look at for steelhead. That's going to be the Northwest Zone, the Southwest Zone, and the Willamette Zone. Definitely make sure to subscribe guys. We're gonna keep doing these reports and if you want to get them up to date Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell now without any further ado Let's jump right into the report. So first guys, we're gonna head on over to the Northwest Zone Starting out the Northwest Zone the All Sea River Which is currently sitting 7,100 cubic feet per second outside of tidewater so the steelhead have definitely showed up on the All Sea River, guys, and it is getting underway as we're getting towards the end of January here. Now, one thing about the All Sea is that the All Sea is a little bit high right now. However, there are some good reports of some catches up towards near the hatchery. So there is steelhead to be caught, but the water conditions are a little bit rough right now. Moving out of these winter storms, we should start to see a better opportunity over on the All Sea River. And on over to the Kilches River. Now the Kilches River, I'm unable to get any kind of water data on the amount of water that is going on in the Kilches. The last report said that as long as the Kilches began to drop, we would probably see good uh, opportunities. However, again, with these winter storms, I would imagine that the Kilches is probably on the high side like most rivers around the state of Oregon, and it might be a little bit tough for you to go over there and catch a steelhead from the Kilches. And the lower Columbia River tributaries. This is going to be like Big Creek, Nat Creek, etc. So the reports say that the fishing over there has been pretty fair. Considering that these are small, controllable tributaries, I would imagine that the water levels are not too difficult over there. And I do have reports of Big Creek recycling fish. Uh, as you knew from the previous reports in last week's, uh, we had a total of 132 fish and they did not give us an update on the number that they recycled. They just said that they have been recycling fish. So there's most certainly fish to be caught in these lower tributaries, and I think they might be a good bet with all of the larger rivers being blown out really high. And the Miami River, which is currently sitting at 1,200 cubic feet per second outside of Tillamook. So the Miami River is fishing well. It is primarily a catch and release only for steelhead, uh, but there is a bunch of wild fish that have been showing up and the river isn't terribly blown out. So the Miami could be a great opportunity to at least go and pull on a steelhead and get into a catch and release scenario. And the Nicanicum River. So the river has definitely been high and off of color. However, the steelhead fishing has been relatively fair over there. It is expected that the river will get into an even better, more fishable condition over this weekend. There's definitely some hatchery steelhead around, as well as some wild steelhead around, so the Nicanicum may be worth a shot. If you're boating on the Nicanicum, you're gonna definitely wanna use caution, as the recent ice storms have put a bunch of trees down without throughout the river. The Nehalem River and Bay, which is currently sitting at 12,000 cubic feet per second outside of Boss. So the river is definitely high right now. It is definitely off color, and it's going to be a challenge to catch any kind of steelhead over there at the moment. However, as the river conditions begin to drop down, we should see a good opportunity because February tends to be a really good time for this river system and the North Fork of the Nehalem River. The river definitely started to become that proper green color that we were looking for last week into Saturday and Sunday. However, we've got some more rains and some water levels rising, so it could be a little while before this fishery begins to come back into a fishable, stable condition. However, the hatchery run for this river did start in December of last year, so there should be plenty of steelhead in the system as long as you can hit it at the right time frame. And the Nestucca River, which is currently sitting at 6,000 cubic feet per second outside of Beaver. So the fishing over here has definitely been slow, which is mainly attributed towards the water conditions. Unfortunately, it definitely seems like this river is gonna to continue to be blown out for a while, but as it drops down later, if you keep track on it, 
the steel head are definitely inside that system so as it begins to clean up we should see some good fishing over there in the Nestucca and the Salmon River. So we know that there's plenty of steelhead inside the Salmon River, but the reports are is that the bite has still continued to be slow. The temperatures are definitely in the right place, but the water level needs to come down a little bit. So if we can get that water level to drop just a little bit, this will be a good opportunity. So it may be a good one to keep your eye on and look for that perfect opportunity to jump in there. And then we've got the Siletz River which is sitting at about 9,000 cubic feet per second outside of Siletz. So water conditions have been a little bit high on the Siletz, and it is expected that the steelhead have come through the Siletz and most likely shot into the upper river system. So the upper basin is where you're gonna wanna be chasing them, typically up towards like the gorge area. However, the river still, while well, all around the state of Oregon right now, rivers are on the high side, so you're gonna begin to wanna watch the water levels and look for that drop. Get that perfect opportunity, but the steelhead are definitely there. And the Siuslaw River, sitting at 12,000 cubic feet per second outside of Mapleton. Now the Sayus Law has definitely been fluctuating back and forth, and 12,000 cubic feet per second is a lot of water. There is plenty of steelhead throughout the system, and we are getting reports of catches. It's just going to be a matter of finding that opportunity when the water level drops down and becomes fair for, for your fishing conditions. However, it is possible to pick them up as you've got tributaries that are flowing into it, you can find some cleaner water and those steelhead are going to hug towards those tributaries. So it's definitely worth a, a, an opportunity to go and try and there is hatchery retention on the Sayusla River. So it could be a good opportunity to go catch a steelhead. And Three Rivers. Three Rivers has had a fair amount of controversy in the last week. Remember to keep in mind that there's a lot of private property on Three Rivers and you're not allowed to fish from a flotation device. However, there is steelhead in the system to be caught, the river's in decent condition, and so it may be a good opportunity to go out there. And we have the Trask River. The Trask is currently sitting at about 4,000 cubic feet outside of Tillamook. So the Trask is definitely a little on the high side and definitely on the, on, on the darker side of water conditions. So we're gonna need this river system to begin to kind of shape up. However, there's definitely steelhead around, but it does look like the forecasted reports that the Trask is gonna continue to be blown out for a while. And we've got the Wilson River, sitting at about 5,300 cubic feet per second near Tillamook. So last week, the fishing was good over there on the Wilson River on Saturday, but going into Sunday, the river began to blow out, and throughout the weekend, it has continued to blow out. So we're going to want to watch those water levels begin to drop down, and I'm sure as soon as they do, the Wilson is again going to become a good fishery and a good opportunity at a steelhead. And the Yukina River, sitting at about 1,400 cubic feet per second outside of Chetwood. So with all of the recent rains, the steelhead are most definitely going to take advantage of those weather conditions and the higher water, and they're going to move up into the upper basins of the Yakina area. And now guys, we're going to move on over to our southwest zone. And we'll start out with the Chetco River, which is sitting at about 12,000 cubic feet per second outside of Brookings. So this river system was doing pretty good in the last couple of weeks. Anglers were finding good success on the bank plunking. Uh, however, you know, the river is going to fish the best near around 4,000 cubic feet. And so everybody is just kind of hanging on and hoping that those uh, water levels are going to drop and give us those fishable conditions. Currently, it's a bit blown out. And so you're going to want to watch that water and get out there when the timing is right. And the Coos River Basin. So a lot of the rivers in this area were in a fishable condition. Uh, we were hoping that we weren't going to see too much rain, but we did see a whole bunch of rain. So these river systems may be a little bit hard to tackle right now and are obviously going to be really, really good as those water conditions begin to drop. Those looking to go over to the West Force Millicoma are definitely going to keep in mind that there was a landslide across the highway. And so that's going to need to get cleaned up before we can get into there. There's currently not a time frame set for that slide to be cleaned up. 
As for the East Fork Millicoma and the South Fork of the Coos, steelhead anglers have been reporting success drifting beads and jigs underneath of a bobber. And keep in mind, if you're going to do the South Fork Coos and you plan on fishing above Delwood, you're going to need to have a warehouser permit. And the Coquille River Basin which is sitting at about 12,500 cubic feet per second outside of Coquille. So the North Fork of the Coquille has reports that the water level has been decent and the fishing has been good. However, the South Fork of the Coquille has been extremely high and fishing is very difficult. But both of these river systems, as the water becomes into good conditions, there's most certainly steelhead throughout the system, and it will make good opportunities as the water begins to come back into a fishable and stable condition and the Elk River. So there has been reports of, of people catching steelhead from the boat, but the high river conditions are definitely going to attribute to making it a difficult time to pick one up. This might be a good opportunity for some diehards because the fish are biting despite the high water conditions. Keep in mind that this tends to be one of the better rivers to fish when we're having all kinds of stormy systems coming through the state because this river typically clears up pretty quickly after a storm. There is limited bank access on this river system, so your, your boat anglers do tend to do the best. And on over to the Illinois River, which is sitting at 7,000 cubic feet per second outside of Curry. So the steelhead are most certainly inside the Illinois River. Keep in mind that it is a primarily catch and release only for winter steelhead. However, there have been reports that the steelhead have been encountered up really high in the system and they're going to continue to move so the steelhead are definitely in the Illinois. Fish have been encountered all the way as high as as Briggs Creek. And let's talk about the Rogue River. And first we will start out with the lower section of the Rogue River which is currently sitting at 18,000 cubic feet per second near Agnes. So again, obviously the river is in a high condition and muddy condition, making fishing extremely difficult. Your best opportunity is going to be plunking from the bank, but there has been reports of success plunking on the river. If you plan on fishing this stretch of a river from a boat, I would definitely consider waiting until the river begins to drop down a little bit and become more stable. And now we'll talk about the middle section of the road, which is running at about 9,000 cubic feet per second near Grants Pass. Current water temperatures for this area are around 45 degrees Fahrenheit, and there have been a few steelhead that have been reported being caught near the Grants Pass area. We can certainly expect more steelhead to show up throughout these coming weeks, especially with high rain water events and lower river system. Uh, your best opportunity is probably going to be pulling plugs or even plunking. And on over to the upper road system. Last reported water levels were 4,500 cubic feet per second coming out of Lost Creek Dam, and temperatures ranging around 42 degrees Fahrenheit. It is reported that this water level from the dam is going to remain at that level for a little while. Because a lot of the river systems in Oregon are blown out due to high water, this could be a good opportunity because this is controlled by the flows of the lake above it, and can tend to not get so blown out during major winter storms. The steelhead are most certainly present, and people are reporting catching steelhead up there, so it could be a good opportunity to hit the upper rogue system. And the Sixes River. The Sixes River has definitely been on the high side. The steelhead are there, but the high water is making it difficult for you to get into the Sixes. So we're gonna wanna watch the water levels and wait for the sixes to drop into shape before I would recommend going and chasing steelhead. However, the steelhead are definitely in the system. Then we've got 10 Mile Lake and 10 Mile Creek. This is another one of those systems that can be good during blown out water just because it is controlled by the lake above it. However, the steelhead fishing has been pretty slow on this system and it's a small system too so as water levels are high all around, there may be multiple anglers trying to seek out these controlled water systems. You may run into a lot of competition with not a lot of bite going on. So it may or may not be worth your time. And on over to the main Umqua River, which is sitting at 23,000 cubic feet per second outside of Elkton. Although that the river has been high and muddy, there is reports of people catching steelhead on the system, so it may be worth the chance to take the boat out and pull some plugs. And the North Umqua River. 
which is sitting at 17,000 cubic feet per second outside of Winchester. Because of the high water conditions, it has been most definitely difficult. There has been some reports of winter steelhead being caught finally on the North Umpqua River. However, it's going to be hard with that high water conditions. And there was a report of a log jam at Dixon Falls, so you're going to want to keep that in mind for safety. The South Fork of the Umpqua River which is sitting at 14,000 cubic feet per second near Roseburg. The river is definitely high and it is muddy, which is making these winter steelhead shoot up the system quick. There is lots of reports of people catching steelhead in the upper systems up towards like Canyonville and those upper areas. However, it's still going to be high even in those upper systems, so it's going to be a challenge, but there is winter steelhead present in the system to be caught. And on over to our Willamette Zone which we will start out with the Clackamas River. Sitting at 11,000 cubic feet per second outside of Estacada. This fishery has started to turn out and people are catching winter steelhead up there. The river is still extremely high and we're dealing with it dropping down into conditions. As this river begins to drop down, I think we're going to see really good opportunities for steelhead because they're most certainly in the system and people are already beginning to catch them with the high water. Keep in mind that this is only expected to become better over the next couple of weeks. And the coastal fork of the Willamette River which is at about 5,000 cubic feet per second outside of Goshen. With high water events, the steelhead are definitely making their way to this system. However, it's still a little bit early to chase winter steelhead over there. And Eagle Creek, which is at about 150 cubic feet per second outside of Skull Creek. Winter steelhead have definitely been caught in the Clackamas, and so the winter steelhead should be showing up to Eagle Creek here very very soon if not already present with it being a lower controlled type system we may run into again a lot of competition in those type of areas however it is controlled and not blown out like most of the rivers and so this could be a good opportunity to try and chase a steelhead and the mckenzie river below Lieberg dam which is sitting at about 14,000 cubic feet per second outside of vida it's still a little bit early for those winter steelhead to start showing up. People are beginning to try for it, and it did get a recent stocking of trout recently, so it could be a good fishing opportunity. And the middle fork of the Willamette River. Keep in mind that this section is only open for bait below Dexter Dam only. This is another one of those systems that the steelhead are most certainly on their way with high water conditions, but it's still a little bit early to start chasing those winter steelhead but they will begin to show up in the next coming weeks, so that doesn't mean that a diehard wouldn't want to go out there and possibly try to catch one of those early ones coming in. And on over to the Sandy River, which is sitting at 11,000 cubic feet per second outside of Bull Run. We were getting good reports of winter steelhead coming through and people catching those fish. However, as the water level has bumped up, it's going to make it a challenge. But as we begin to watch this river and we wait for the, that system to begin to drop down, we're going to find good opportunities because the steelhead are most certainly there and the bite had begun to pick up before the river system blew out. So keep an eye on this river and definitely go hit it as those windows of opportunities open up. It'll be a good chance at a steelhead. And the North Fork Santa Am River, sitting at 13,500 cubic feet outside of Mahama. Best time to catch steelhead on this system is at about 3,000 cubic feet, and so we're at 10,000 cubic feet above that. So it's going to be a challenge to get any kind of steelhead out of the system at the moment. There's certainly steelhead moving throughout the system, but we're going to need those water levels to drop before we start to get good opportunities to chase them. And the South Fork Santa Am River, which is sitting at about 7,000 cubic feet per second near Foster. The South Fork is also best at around 3,000 cubic feet per second. At least we're not as nearly as high as the North Fork. We're sitting at 7,000 cubic feet per second, but it is more than double what we would like for good conditions. Again, the steelhead have definitely moved inside of this system and they are present. People were catching them prior to the big rain events. So as the river begins to drop down, again, this is going to be one of those opportunities that's going to be good if you can catch that window. 
And that's it for the report this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you go out and find success. Definitely make sure to stay, stay safe and be careful with all of the rain events, high water events, trees down in rivers, trees down across highways. Just be careful out there. Definitely make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you can get updated the next time we do a report. We plan on doing some steelhead salmon and other different reports for the entire state of Oregon on the regular, so make sure to follow us and subscribe. Until next time, guys, we will see you.